You either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. Now, that's not a perfect analogy for Liam Neeson's sinful utterances, so let me repurpose it. You either die a hero when you're a young actor, or you live long enough to say something that's out of step with the cultural zeitgeist and get crucified for it. So what actually happened here? Well, Liam Neeson was promoting his latest movie, Cold Pursuit. Without giving too much away, Cold Pursuit is revenge porn of the type you expect to see Neeson in ever since he starred in Taken. And so Neeson's controversial comments come in the context of being asked, how do you tap into an emotion like revenge to play a part like this? Let's listen to what he actually said. I'll tell you a story. This is true. I'm not going to use any names, but I was away and I came back and... She told me she had been raped, but she handled the situation of the rape in the most extraordinary way. But my immediate reaction was, I asked, did, they, did she know who it was? No. What color were they? She said it was a black person. I went up and down areas with a cosh hoping I'd be uh, approached by somebody. I'm ashamed to say that. And I did it for maybe a week, hoping some black bastard would come out of a pub and have a go at me about something, you know, so that I could kill him. And it was that. It took me a week, maybe a week and a half to kind of go for that. And she said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm just going out for a walk, you know. Said, what's wrong? No, no, nothing's wrong. Fine. And it was horrible, horrible when I think back. But I did that. And I've never admitted that to it. I'm saying it to a journalist. God forbid. Holy shit. It's awful. But I did learn a lesson from it when I eventually thought, what the fuck are you doing, you know? And I come from a society, I grew up in Northern Ireland in the Troubles, and, I, you know, I, I knew a couple of guys that died on hunger strike, and I had acquaintances that were very caught up in the Troubles. And I understand that need for revenge, but it just leads to more revenge and more killing and more killing. And, you know, Ireland, Northern Ireland is proof of that, you know. All, all the stuff that's happening in the world at the minute, the violence is proof of that, you know. So it's... Uh, so, but that, yeah, primal need, I, I understand, you, you know. You can relate to that. And so, of course, the predictable Twitter storm ensued and the headlines rolled, leading to Lionsgate cancelling the red carpet event for the movie's New York premiere. To his credit, Neeson still went on Good Morning America to explain himself, and he got a good reception from the crowd that was present. Unfortunately, I can't show you any of that because doing so gets my video blocked worldwide. One of the questions put to Neeson in the GMA interview was why did he go straight to a question about race? Why didn't he ask his friend other questions about the guy's physical appearance? For example, how tall he was or what colour hair he had. Neeson said that he did do that and he also claims that he's not a racist. New York Times columnist Charles Blowhard begs to differ though, claiming that Neeson is a representative of racial terror. That's the same New York Times that appointed Sarah Jong to its editorial board. And yes, he used the present tense. Remember, this happened almost 40 years ago, but in the new world of the offence archaeologists, there is no redemption. If you said or did something racist once in your life, then you are a racist for life. By that standard, everyone on the planet is a racist. But was Neeson's reaction in fact racist, or was it, as Sam Harris argued on Joe Rogan's podcast, an example of instrumental violence? Or in other words, as Neeson himself said, quote, if she'd had said, an Irish or a Scot or a Brit or a Lithuanian, I know it would have had the same effect. So it was tribal. You do harm to someone of my tribe, I'll seek to do harm to a member of yours. Now, of course, it's worth reiterating that nothing actually happened. Neeson came to his senses, sought some advice, and channeled his rage into a more positive place. But of course, in the era of outrage, having done no harm doesn't matter. He was guilty of thought crime. And given the recent failures of progressives to successfully convict someone of racism in the court of public opinion, there was a sense of elation on Twitter that this time they had their man. 
He basically said he wanted to lynch a black man. We've seen this before. Hashtag Emmett Till. Hashtag Rosewood. Yeah, that's what he said. He wanted to lynch a 14-year-old black boy because he offended a white woman. And of course, how could we forget the role of white privilege? And if this was Will Smith talking about how he walked the street hoping to be provoked by a white man into violence, I bet he'd be applauded by the mainstream media. He'd be on every talk show and lauded as a hero. Perhaps Spike Lee would even make it into a movie. But it wasn't all one-way traffic. Some Hollywood types defended Neeson, and this piece in The Guardian was relatively well balanced. But of course, being The Guardian, they had to balance out that reasonableness with their usual hot take. Now, whether you think what Neeson said was racist or not, if you can't admit to even thinking something racist 40 years ago, how can you expect to have an honest discussion about race? Well, I suspect for some that's just fine. They don't want to have an honest discussion. They just want to play bigotry bingo, ruin someone's career, and move on to the next victim. Or perhaps this furor will have the unintended consequence of more people going to see the movie. I hadn't even heard about Cold Pursuit until this story broke, and after researching it today, I've now seen the trailer multiple times on separate YouTube videos. Perhaps it's true that any publicity is good publicity. And as for Liam Neeson, I guess we'll have to wait and see what happens to his career prospects to know if he really has become the villain. I'll see you next time.